Hello and welcome to the first of our post-Easter Bible studies on the book of Ruth. This will be the first of four talks followed um, after I finished by George I think for the next few weeks and then we'll see what happens in our great adventure. I hope you're keeping well during this time of isolation and that you are managing all right with all the things that you have to do. It's a strange world we live in and we may have to get used to living in it for some time, but God is with us and he is in charge. So to the book of Ruth, which is found in the, the Old Testament. And the subject of the story is Ruth, who was of the Moabites people. <coughs> she married a neighboring Israelite, the son of Naomi. But the man died, leaving her a widow in Naomi's house. Ruth was a great-grandmother of King David and all of this is taking place around about 1100 to 1050 BC in Bethlehem of Judea. Now the Moabites were a hill people and very near neighbours of Israel. They occupied a plateau to the east of the Dead Sea about 3,000 feet above the Mediterranean level um, considerably further um, uh, above the, the Dead Sea which is below sea level as you probably know. Archaeological studies show that the kingdom of Boab was thriving by the time of the Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses II who lived around about 1300 BC uh, well before our story takes place and Moab himself was descended from Lot and we read in Deuteronomy that God renewed his covenant with the people of Israel uh, on, in the place of, called Moab. Moses died there before the children of Israel entered the promised land. And although there'd been a history of conflict between the Moabites and the Israelites, they were clearly on friendlier terms by the time our story takes place, um, roughly a couple of hundred years after um, the, the Ramesses the second reference and a long time after the kingdom had been founded. Naomi's husband, a man called Elimelech, moved her family to Moab during the time of famine in Israel. This was not unusual at that time when people were um, suffering a lot from uh, the weather and drought just as we do today. And they lived there for around about 10 years. Their two sons took Moabite wives, Ruth and Orpah. There, eventually, um, Naomi's husband died as well as both of her sons. So it left Naomi and her daughters-in-law all widowed together. In these rather patriarchal days, this was a bit of a precarious situation. So Naomi believed that the best course of action that she could take was to return to her own land and let her daughters-in-law go back to their own families where they could be cared for effectively and no doubt they would find new husbands from among their own people. And after much consideration and emotion, Orpah, decided to take her mother-in-law's advice and return to her parents' house. But Ruth implored Naomi to let her stay with her. And if we read from Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, we get the following passage. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. And then Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home, and may the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. And she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud. And they said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? 
Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And at this they wept aloud again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung, clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, please don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. And may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. And when Naomi realised that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her to leave. They arrived in the land of Judea at the beginning of the barley harvest. Naomi is concerned for her daughters-in-law's physical and well-being. And we can see the sense of that. Moab would be culturally familiar, they'd be safe with their families, and they could return to their own gods. But Ruth has three problems with that. Firstly, Ruth feels love and loyalty to her married family, to Naomi personally, who has shown her such love and kindness, and wishes to continue to serve and to help her in what, let's not forget, will be a very hard time for Naomi. Ruth will not abandon her until she dies, as we read in verse 17. Secondly, Ruth has become accustomed to Naomi's way of life. She's been adopted into her family and become part of it. She has seen and felt Naomi's kindness and the love and respect she has been afforded. She wants to give something back. Thirdly, and perhaps most critically, Ruth has embraced the faith of Naomi. She has seen God working in her life and has come to faith in God for herself. The gods of Moab are strange to her. She doesn't want empty pagan worship. She wants the worship of the true God who is there. The God she has experienced and established a relationship with and that she's come to love. Life in a foreign land beckons for Ruth, but it's not a foreign culture. Ruth chooses a life of continuity of faith. We read in verse 16, Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Ruth has chosen the path of faith, loyalty, and love. Faith over the familiar and family, loyalty to one who has shown her commitment to her and love for the one who has loved her and welcomed her over the years. Ruth has put her faith in God. She's chosen to follow God and to make the people of God her own people. Where will God lead her now? Well, we'll see next time. Let's pray together. Lord, we live in a time of great uncertainty where we will be led over the next few weeks and months is far from shore. We feel anxious, sometimes insecure. The certainties we thought we had are not as tangible as they once appeared. Yet this has always been the case. The Spirit leads where the Spirit will. Forgive us, Lord, that we have rested too much in what we thought was going to happen tomorrow or the next day, instead of listening to your voice and following your life-giving spirit. Help us to trust in you as Ruth did, to put our faith in you as Ruth did, to follow you each hour, each day, each minute. 
The only time we can experience is now. Here in your presence, Lord, teach us to walk with you every moment. Teach us to listen to your voice, to be still and to know that you are God. To love you as you have loved us and to love our neighbours as ourselves, as you have taught us. Lord, you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and your promises are sure. Help us to live in the light of your word. Make us salt and light and blessing in difficult times and strengthen our faith in the certainty of your salvation through your risen Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the road always rise up to meet you and the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. <laughs>